Hi everyone, in this lesson we want to look at a new way to solve quadratic equations by a method that we're going to call extracting square roots. Some books uh, call it the square root method. Now let's consider a quadratic equation that's just of this form, x squared equals a number like x squared equals 4. Well, if I were to bring solve this by factoring the way that we uh, usually solve quadratic equations, I get 0 on one side, so I take the 4 over, and then I can factor that as a difference of squares, x plus 2 times x minus 2 equals 0, and I will get <clears throat> from this factor, setting this factor equal to 0, I'll get x equals negative 2, and setting this factor equal to 0, I'll get x equals positive 2, and I can abbreviate that answer just writing x equals plus or minus 2. Now, I can do that even with a number that isn't a perfect square like 3. I can bring the 3 over and factor it just like I did over here. This will factor as x plus the square root of 3 times x minus the square root of 3. Now you might not have thought to factor it that way, but I think if you foil it back out you'll see that it really does work. And you can see that I'm going to get x equals negative the square root of 3 from this solution. Uh, or this factor, and x equals positive square root of 3 from this factor. So I can again simplify that, just write this as x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. Alright, so I can do that same thing with any number over here. I can just bring the k over, x squared minus k equals 0, and then factor that as x minus the square root of k, or x plus the square root of k, times x minus the square root of k. And then I set each of those equal to uh, 0, and I would get x equals the negative square root of k from this factor, and x equals the positive square root of k from this factor. So I can abbreviate that as x equals plus or minus the square root of k. Well, after you've seen that three times, it becomes pretty obvious that if x squared is equal to number, then rather than going through all these steps, I could just, I could just skip right down here and just say x is equal to plus or minus the square root of the number. All right, so if, if I have x squared equals k, x is going to be plus or minus the square root of k. Now, I could do that with x squared equals 4, uh, or x squared equals negative 4. I could just say x is plus or minus the square root of negative 4, which I know is a complex number. That's plus or minus 2i. And that's really fast and easy. And notice that if I square 2i, or if I square negative 2i, that would give me 4i squared, and I'd get to trade the i squared in for a negative 1, and so it really does work there. Another way I could think about this, just to expand our factoring abilities, I could bring the negative 4 over and write this as x squared minus a negative 4, and then I could factor that as x plus the square root of negative 4 times x minus the square root of negative 4, and so <coughs> Uh, if I wanted to write this as x plus 2i times x minus 2i, you'd see that it actually is possible. Uh, notice that this is the same thing as x squared plus 4 equals 0. Before, we were never able to factor sums of squares, only the difference of squares, like x squared minus 4. But now that we have the complex number and numbers, and I can uh, think of this trick, I can actually factor the sums of squares, and it'll factor similar to what, what we did with x squared equals 4, x squared minus 4. <clears throat> I just get i's, x plus 2i times x minus 2i, okay? <clears throat> okay, so let's go on to another problem. This gives us a new way to solve a quadratic equation where there's no middle term. Notice here there's no x term, just 3x squared plus 11 equals 38. So rather than getting everything on one side and factoring it, what I could do is I could get the x squared all by itself on one side and make use of this square root property or extract the square root. So let's go ahead and subtract 11 from both sides and divide both sides by 3 and then fast as lightning I see x is just plus or minus 3. <clears throat> So if we ever recognize that there's no middle term, this would be a real fast way of solving a quadratic equation. Likewise here, I could take the 4 over on this side. I could divide both sides by 25. And then I could use the square root property, or extract the square roots, and I would get x equals plus or minus the square root of the negative 4 25ths which would be plus or minus 2 fifths i. Remember the square root of the negative gives you an i there. Okay, now let's go to another problem like this. 
If I give this to my students on a test, almost all of them, because we've trained them so well to square binomials, would write this out as x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 10. They'd go ahead and square that out and then they'd bring the 10 over and then they'd try and factor this but you'd notice that there's no factors of 6 that are going to give me 4 in the middle. I'm sort of stuck and so that didn't help. I'm unable to solve it but if I were to think of this problem similar to the way we did these problems above it if I have something squared equals to 10 then this something in this case the x plus 2 has to be plus or minus the square root of 10 and then it's very easy to solve x is just negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 10. Now I could do that similarly on this problem if I didn't have my wits about me if I didn't think well why why are these three terms grouped together and I just said oh well they just we just need to simplify this and I wrote x squared minus 6x plus 45 equals 0 then I'd look long and hard to find any factors of 45 that would give me negative 6. There aren't any. So I, I can't solve this by factoring. But if I would have recognized that this is a perfect square, then I could do it like I did the previous one. I could take the 36 on the other side, and I would have something squared equals a negative 36, so I could extract the square roots x minus 3 would be plus or minus the square root of negative 36 which is plus or minus 6i so my answer is x equals 3 plus or minus 6i and this either one of these solutions 3 plus 6i or 3 minus 6i if I were to plug it into this equation would make this true let's just check that real quick if I were to take 3 plus uh, 6i and I'm going to store that as x in my calculator and then if I were to square that if I were to take x squared and subtract 6 times x and then add 45 that should equal 0 let's see what we get sure enough it equals 0 so it really is a solution if I were to do 3 minus 6i it would also be a solution well what we're getting at in these two examples right here uh, hopefully you'll see that you know if there's some way <clears throat> if I had a quadratic equation like this or like this that I was unable to solve if I could somehow work backwards if I could somehow make it look like this something squared equals to 10 or you know in this case something squared equals negative 36 then I could extract the square roots and I would be able to solve that uh, problem that otherwise I, I was unable to solve by factoring. All right, so we're going to exploit that idea in our next uh, section where we look at, at solving quadratic equations by a technique that we call completing the square.